Welcome to News Talk with Simone Ivani at the International News Channel. We are joined today by Gloria Fung, a political commentator, coalition builder, and the president of Canada Hong Kong Link, a nonpartisan organization which aims to facilitate community involvement among Hong Kong Canadians. Gloria strongly advocates for democracy and human rights. She has been outspoken about opposing the Chinese government's suppression of Hong Kong liberties amid the new national security law. The new law criminalizes any acts of secession, subversion, terrorism, and collusion. Critics are calling the law the end of Hong Kong. Gloria's work has also been centered around bolstering public knowledge surrounding the Chinese government's use of intimidation tactics against dissenters within Canada among ongoing tensions between Hong Kong and Beijing. Thank you for joining us, Gloria. Thank you very much for having me. First of all, can you tell our viewers a little bit about what is going on between Hong Kong and the Chinese Communist Party? Well, uh, last July, the uh, Chinese Communist Party uh, used the national security law to silence dissent in Hong Kong. And key leaders of opposition parties, NGOs, academic and media sector uh, have been arrested and charged with threatening the state's stability or collusion with foreign forces. And people offending uh, the national security law could be subject to a lifelong imprisonment. And that is why uh, many Hong Kongers under political persecutions have been fleeing to UK, Canada, US, or Taiwan, Australia, et cetera. And uh, Canada Hong Kong Link has been um, you know, advocating for our Canadian government to provide a lifeboat program to save lives of Hong Kongers under political persecution. So what has sparked the nonstop protests that are happening in Hong Kong since June of 2019? Well, uh, the Hong Kong protesters, uh, you know, protests have been sparked by a proposed extradition bill that allowed the Chinese government to summon uh, Hong Kongers that they do not like uh, to be sent back to face unfair uh, court proceedings in, in China. And since there's no rule of law in China and the jail conditions, uh, you know, quite often are very, very bad. And therefore, uh, millions of people in Hong Kong have staged peaceful demonstrations on the streets to oppose to this uh, very controversial uh, extradition bill. And, uh, and, uh, but the, the Hong Kong government did not listen to their uh, concerns. And instead, uh, the Hong Kong government used uh, police brutality to crack down on the peaceful demonstrators. And that is why it has you know, resulted in a very uh, severe tension between the government and also the people there. What other kind of impacts has this, the China's national security legislation had on people of Hong Kong? Well, uh, the national uh, security law essentially criminalizes uh, dissent and also the freedom of expression. And uh, it has been used to put to jail people who are merely exercising the freedom of expression in Hong Kong. And uh, that was guaranteed to them by the Sino-British Joint Declaration, which is uh, international treaty registered with the United Nations. Uh, therefore, most people in Hong Kong have expressed the feelings of frustrations and betrayal. And the leading dissents uh, have been put to jail or they have been charged with very severe, uh, you know, criminal act in Hong Kong. Tibetans, Uyghur Muslims and Hong Kongers have all advocated for cancelling the 2022 Olympics in China. In your opinion, what are the chances that the international community will listen to these calls of action? Well, the call for the boycott of the Beijing Winter Olympics is not only confined to the Tibetan, Hong Kong or uh, the Uyghur Muslims uh, community. It is also strongly supported by other communities, including the Taiwanese, uh, the Burmese, Vietnamese, as well as a lot of Canadian human rights groups. And uh, here in Canada, we are trying to put pressure on the Canadian Olympic Committee and also our government to reconsider our participation in the Beijing Winter Olympics. 
as we always say, no rice, no game. And uh, remember, our two Michaels are still being held as hostages in Chinese jail, as well as other wrongfully uh, imprisoned Canadians. So given all you know the, the brutality going on in China and Hong Kong, as well as the genocide in East Turkestan region, should our prime minister and our Canadian elected representatives uh, still endorse the Winter Olympic Games in Beijing as if nothing has happened between our relationship and China. I don't think this is right. And uh, so for the Chinese Communist Party, it's a very brutal dictatorship who has been trying to use the Olympic Games uh, to portray a proud and peaceful image around the world. And mm -hmm. Canada should not help them uh, to sustain this kind of fraud. Recently, the U.S. and the Western world more generally has finally recognized the threat posed by the Chinese Communist Party. Does this help your cause? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Western democracies, especially the Five Eye allies and some, uh, uh, you know, EU countries have begun to realize the true nature of the Chinese Communist regime and also its global expansion uh, by means of both soft and sharp powers to infiltrate, manipulate, and intimidate uh, nationals around the world. And uh, so they are beginning to realize the significance of collaborate together to come up with a comprehensive and effective strategy in stopping China's expansionist approach around the world. And coming back to our country, so why should Canadians care about Beijing's suppression of democracy in Hong Kong? Well, uh, we are facing a global struggle between democracy and dictatorship right now. And we have uh, close to half a million Canadians living and working in Hong Kong, as well as several hundreds of Canadian corporations uh, operating in Hong Kong. So defending Hong Kong's autonomy and democracy and freedom is also defending our core values, national interests and also security. And uh, um, both Hong Kongers and Canadians, we share the same set of core values. And uh, so, the, but the Hong Kong's national security law does not only apply in Hong Kong. It also criminalizes, uh, you know, citizens around the world who are critical towards China and Hong Kong. So this interview by your uh, TV station will make me a criminal in the eyes of the Chinese regime. And whenever I'm in China or I'm in transit uh, via Hong Kong, I could be arbitrarily arrested uh, by the Hong Kong government uh, in the name of uh, offending their national security law. And, and it shows how serious, uh, you know, this uh, national security, security law is to citizens around the world. In that case, I actually really admire you for having the courage to speak up and to be able to speak to news channels such as myself about the topic and raise awareness for that. Thank you very much. I think that this is our responsibility to raise awareness in Canada as well as around the world, because basically um, we we cannot uh, just, you know, remain silent. Silent diplomacy no longer works for Canada as well as other Western democracies. Mm -hmm. I think we have made a major mistake by allowing China to emerge as a major economic power in the world. And now it has turned itself into a monster and it starts to bully other countries, including Canada. So I think uh, we need to take timely and decisive action to stop its expansionist approach around the world as well as in Canada. To date, what has the Canadian government done to support Hong Kongers or dissenters of the Chinese government more generally? Well, uh, the Canadian government has issued a few statements to condemn the police brutality as well as the imposition of the national security law in Hong Kong. Um, 
However, uh, um, you know, uh, Canada has also joined U.S. in sanctioning a few Chinese officials. Unfortunately, as of today, none of the Hong Kong officials responsible for violation of human rights in Hong Kong have been sanctioned. And I hope that will happen soon uh, in order to uh, combat uh, the brutality going on in Hong Kong. Um, Canadian government has also offered uh, the open study permit and open web permit to Hong Kongers who would like to uh, come to Canada uh, to flee from the political persecution there. But unfortunately, because of the pandemic, our border has been closed and uh, many of them have not been issued a special travel document uh, to leave Hong Kong before uh, the Hong Kong border is going to be closed uh, in early August. So this is very unfortunate. Uh, therefore, uh, we have been advocating uh, for our government to issue special uh, travel document to Hong Kong people who are under political persecution so that they can leave Hong Kong before the Hong Kong border is totally closed. You mentioned that there are a lot of Canadians who are living on in Hong Kong, at least. So what kind mm -hmm. of impact does the new laws or China suppression have on those Canadians, as well as Hong Kongers who are living in Canada, for that matter? Well, uh, I think uh, uh, Canadians uh, have also been significantly impacted by the national security law, as, as well as what is going on in Hong Kong. As I have mentioned, uh, Hong Kong is by far the largest Canadian city outside of Canada, with half a million Canadians living and working in Hong Kong. And at the same time, apart from using the national security law to jeopardize Canadians' security in Hong Kong or in any part of China, uh, the Chinese soil, uh, the Chinese agents are also actively intimidating and harassing Canadians' uh, freedom of expression on Canadian soil. Uh, you know, uh, just around a year ago, when Canada Hong Kong Link, together with other Hong Kong support group, staged our peaceful demonstration in Toronto, we have been harassed and intimidated by a lot of mainland Chinese international students, as well as members of the United Front organizations uh, under influence of the Chinese embassy here. Uh, to stop us from uh, continuing with our peaceful march. So it shows to you how serious the intimidation is. And apart from that, they are also, uh, you know, doing a lot of lobbying and they are also infiltrating, uh, manipulating and uh, into different sectors of our Canadian society, including uh, political arena, uh, our community, as well as media. And uh, many of the Chinese Canadian uh, language media have actually been under control of the Chinese embassy here. Speaking of your protests and that people were at least trying to prevent it, what do you think the general public can do to support people in Hong Kong and Canadians who are targeted by China's government? I think it's very important for Canadians to tell our elected members of the three governments about our deep concern towards the infiltration, manipulation and intimidation by foreign force, uh, that is the Chinese Communist Party on Canadian soil. And uh, we also need to ask them uh, to come up with effective legislation uh, that will uh, enable our enforcement departments to depart uh, Chinese agents that have been actively working in the best interests of this foreign force uh, in Canada, as well as some of the diplomats who have uh, been doing, uh, you know, conducting, uh, uh, you know, activities that are way beyond the diplomatic jurisdiction. I think it's very important that Canada need to come up with a strong stance towards China. And at the same time, we also need to show our leadership on the world stage that we are not going to kowtow to this very arrogant 
uh, dictatorship. In your opinion, what is the threat of the Chinese government's infiltration in Canada? And how often does the Chinese Communist Party use intimidation tactics against dissenters on Canadian soil? Well, I think based on our research and also information that we have gathered from different sectors of our Canadian society, uh, the infiltration and manipulation by Chinese Communist Party uh, on Canadian soil is getting worse and worse. And uh, just imagine, just uh, just last week, uh, the coordinator of the independent senators group, uh, Senator Wu Yun Pao, has actually uh, spoken, you know, openly against uh, what our government and also our uh, foreign ministry have have uh, said before about uh, the genocide in the East Turkestan region. And uh, and we have been wondering whether or not, you know, this kind of senator or even some of the MPs have always been serving as the advocate for the Chinese government or really working in Canada's best interests. And uh, we have also uh, uh, evidence that uh, Chinese agents have also interfered with the direction of uh, many of our uh, university research uh, projects. And uh, they have also been intimidating uh, academic people as well as community leaders who are outspoken about uh, what, you know, I mean, the violation of human rights by the Chinese government. So I think. Uh, you know, all in all, um, the the infiltration and uh, manipulation by the Chinese Communist Party in Canada is getting, you know, uh, getting worse. And that's why we need to take a timely action to stop all this. Otherwise, uh, there won't be any return if, you know, they uh, continue to build up the influence in our country. So what are you hoping the future of Hong Kong will look like? Well, I think, uh, you know, the, the, the crackdown on the civil society in Hong Kong is getting worse and worse. Uh, many people, particularly key leaders and activists have been arrested and uh, many of them are likely to be uh, you know, given a very long sentence, uh, you know, if ever the court hearing has been completed. And uh, so Hong Kong is going through an uh, unprecedented difficult time in its history. And that's why international concern and support is so significant at this stage to keep the hope alive among Hong Kong people who still who, who stay behind there. And uh, but I have faith in their resilience and determination to fight for their future in terms of autonomy, democracy, freedom, rule of law and human rights. And Canadians also need to uh, render our support and solidarity with all of them. It's been a pleasure hearing your thoughts on this, Gloria. Thank you for agreeing to speak to me. Thank you very much for having me today. I'm Simone Ivani, and you're watching the International News Channel. Thanks for tuning in to today's show. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the bell notifications to stay up to date on latest news.